Hello friends, happy Wednesday. Hope your day is going great so far. Um, let's jump right into it. So again, we are going through the book Essential Truths of the Christian Faith by R.C. Sproul. If you've been following me this whole time, then you should be able to say this with, I don't know, very quickly. Because <laughs> we have been obviously going through 24 chapters and today we're going to do 20, um, the 25th chapter of this book. Um, chapters are short and sweet, honestly, and there are, I think, 100 chapters. So if you are thinking about joining us um, and you want to get the book, you still have time. Um, again, because the chapters are short and sweet. They're like one page. Like this is, that is today's chapter. That's it. <laughs> so let's get to it. So this, um, today we're going to start part four of this book and part four is Jesus Christ. So we're going to be talking about him and who he is um, and why through him we have salvation. So the very basis of um, Jesus is we have to believe that he is the son of God um, and he is God himself. So that's what we're going to talk about, the deity of Christ. And this word is kind of big. I'm like, deity, what is that? Um, so I looked up the dictionary like I usually do, things that are words that I'm not familiar with. And the, the definition is um, divine character or nature, divinity, a god or a goddess, right? This is in the Webster Dictionary. Um, so the deity has to do with that part of Jesus that is God or the fact that he is God. And why is he God? And why do we uh, worship him as such, okay? So yeah, let's get to it. It says, faith in the deity of Christ is necessary to being a Christian. This is like the basics. Um, we are Christians. Uh, we are Christ followers. That's why you have the word Christ in Christian. And um, we follow him and we don't think that he was just a prophet. We don't think, um, because I know other religions see him as a, a good man and he just came and he did good things. He did noble things. Um, I know uh, the Muslims believe that he is a prophet. Um, but even in the Quran, you have Jesus doing miraculous things, um, doing miracles, having a miraculous birth, having a miraculous life, uh, bringing people back to dead, to the, bringing people back from the dead, death, from death, um, and having a miraculous life um, than anybody in, in the world. Um, and you see this even in books uh, like the Quran, uh, which Muslims, obviously, it's like their Bible, it's like their holy book. Um, and you have other religions that also, also just think that he was just like a man, like, you know, every other man, but we know that the Bible teaches that that is not true. And our faith is that he absolutely was God. Okay. And this again is the basis of our Christianity. This is what sets us apart from any other religion. Um, the fact that we believe in Jesus Christ, that he came and he's our savior and we are to surrender our lives to him. So again, that is the basis of Christianity. He says, it is an essential part of the New Testament gospel of Christ. If you don't get this, then the whole New Testament, you're not going to get. <laughs> and if you don't get this, essentially, the whole Bible, you won't get. Okay. Yet in every century, the church has been forced to deal with people who claim to be Christians while denying or distorting the deity of Christ. And again, through centuries, you've had Christians who say they're Christians, but they deny the fact that he is God. Or uh, which what you have a lot nowadays is people that distort it, okay? That say he is, but really in their actions show that he is not, okay? In church history, there has been four centuries, again, in which confession of the deity of Christ has been crucial and stormy, and stormy issue inside of the church. Those centuries have been the 4th, the 5th, the 19th, and the 20th. So Archie's probably even goes into history here, guys. So um, since we are living in one of the centuries where heresy assaults the church, it is urgent that we safeguard the church's confession of Christ's deity. Okay, so because we have that nowadays where you have people who distort um, Christianity and Jesus Christ and the gospel, um, this is why we have confessions. Um, I've said this before, if we are off by even just one degree um, when it comes to the real gospel, it is heresy, meaning it is false. It is a false gospel. Okay, we have to preach and we have to teach that Jesus is the who he says to be according to scripture, okay? Um, and confessions pretty much are just um, 
like statements that um, churches put out there to say, hey, these are our beliefs according to what Bible the Bible says. This is what our confessions are as far as Christ, as far as God the Father, as far as the Trinity, as far as all these things. So um, that's what they're saying, that they have to go back to those confessions to um, to really stay true to what Christ is and what who he says to be. Okay, so again, it is urgent that we safeguard the church's confession of Christ's deity. And this is what Arshis Pro goes to say now. He let us know what those confessions are about Christ according to the Bible. Okay, so he says at the Council of Nicaea, hopefully I'm not butchering that, it's N-I-C-E-A, in AD 3, uh, 325 AD, the church in opposition to the Arian heresy um, declared that Jesus is begotten, not made, and that his divine nature is of the same essence with the Father. Okay, so again, these are declarations and we, we learned a few uh, chapters ago that when heresy comes, when false religions come or false, um, uh, I guess, confessions and when it comes to Christ and what we believe, when those rise is when the church has to um, debate it and say, no, those are not, fa- those are false. Those are not true because this is what the Bible says. Okay, now here it says that in that confession, we believe that he has a divine, Jesus Christ has a divine nature in the same essence like the Father, like God the Father. This affirmation declared that the second person of the Trinity is one in essence with God the Father. So the first person is God the Father, then God the Son, then God the Holy Spirit. They have different positions, they have different roles. One is not better than the other. Okay, we talked about when we talked about the Trinity of like a few chapters ago. We talked about how God is one in being, but three in persons. So I am a human being, but my person is Annie. So God, Yahweh, is one in being, but the persons that um, we see that uh, that he is as well um, is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And that is not contradictory um, because um, he they're not, uh, they're not one in one sense, in the sense of, okay, so I am uh, a mother, I am a daughter, and I am a wife but not in the same sense. So not to the same person. So like for my husband, I am his wife, but I'm not his daughter and I'm not his mother. You see what I'm saying? But in di- different ses- in different different uh, different essence, I am a, f- a wife to my husband. I am a daughter to my mom and I am a mother to my daughter. You see what I'm saying? So it's not contradictory for me to say I'm a wife, a mother and a daughter because I am but in different as se- different essence. So same thing with God. He's one in being, but he's three in persons, three in uh, dif- three different essence. Okay. Um, hopefully I didn't lose you. <laughs> Stay with me. Uh, so this affirmation declares, like I said, the second person of the Trinity is one in essence with God the Father. That is, the being of Christ is the being of God. He is not merely similar to do- de- the deity, but he is the deity. So it's not like he's just really close to being God. So that's why we say he's God, like if we're rounding up. <laughs> No, he is God, okay? The confession of the deity of Christ is drawn from the manifold manifold, sorry, witness of the New Testament. Um, as the Logos incarnate, Christ is revealed as being not only pre-existent to creation, but eternal. And we see this as well. He's going to go into detail now that we know that God, uh, that Jesus was not, did God didn't just come up with him because he just needed somebody to save us. No, he was from the beginning, from the very beginning of creation. And before that, he always was, he always existed. Okay. Um, he is said to be in the beginning with God. And also that he is God, all right? And this is found in John 1, um, and I'll look it up for you. John 1, 1 through 3. So John is in the New Testament. Um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. It's one of the Gospels. And I'm going to read it if I find it. Quick enough. Sorry. I should have had this open. I didn't think I was going to read it, but... I feel like reading it, so let's do it. So John 1, 1 through 3, it says, In the beginning was the Word, the Word, which is Jesus. The Word was with God, meaning Jesus was with God. The Word was God. Jesus was God in the beginning, all right? And he was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was, sorry. All things that were made through him and without him was not anything made that was made 
Meaning, in the beginning, it was him. And he, God the Father was there, but so was Jesus Christ, okay? Um, that he is with God demands a personal distinction within the Godhead. That he is God demands inclusion in the Godhead. So he was there with God in the beginning, but he's also included in the deity of God, meaning he is God himself, okay? Elsewhere in the New Testament, ascribes terms and titles to Jesus that are clearly titles of deity. And this is something that um, this year I started reading the New Testament from the beginning, and I started with each gospel. And my point was to see where it is that Jesus said himself that he was God. And he never, the words never came out saying, I am God, meaning I am. But everything that he said about himself made him absolutely equal to God, okay? Said elsewhere, sorry, I feel like sometimes I'm just like, God, why, Jesus, why didn't you just go ahead and say it? Because he wanted us to really scrutinize his life in a good way. Like he really wanted us to pick and pick at every word that he said and make sure, um, I guess to follow the, 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 the breadcrumbs or the trail to see everything that he, or hear everything that he was saying or read everything that he said, um, to guide us, to get us to really read the word, to see where it is that he said that he was God. Okay. So, okay, God bestows the preeminent divine title of Lord upon him, okay? This is found in Philippians 2, 1 through 19. As the Son of Man, Jesus claims to be the Lord of the Sabbath. So he starts, he makes um, assertions and claims about himself that would make him equal to God, okay? We see that in Mark 2, uh, chapter 2, verse 28. And to have the authority to forgive sins. So he said himself, I have the authority to forgive sins. You cannot say that without you being God. And God and Jesus knew that. And that is why he said it. You know what I'm saying? That's why he made a point to say, hey, I can forgive sins. He's like, I am the Father or the Lord of the Sabbath. You know, I am the Lord myself. And um, even here it doesn't say, but even reading through the Gospels, I've seen this as God says, that Jesus says, I am the image of the invisible God. If you've seen me, you've seen God. Um, So he says all that. He forgives sins. It's like he absolutely is God, okay? He is called the Lord of glory and willingly receives worship. As when Thomas confessed, my Lord, my God. And we see this in John chapter 20, verse 28. So he, in saying all this, is affirming that he is God. If not, if he was not God, and he was Elijah, or he was, you know, any other prophet, or Moses, or whatever, whoever these people thought that he was, they would have clearly, or he would have clearly said, no, 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 do not worship me, worship God. I am not God. And he would have made it clear, but he did it. And the fact that he didn't point obviously to his deity, meaning that he is God. Paul in the New Testament declares that the fullness of the Godhead dwells in Christ's bodily. All right. This is found in Colossians 1 19. The, again, the fullness of the Godhead, meaning the Trinity, um, dwells in Christ's body. How can the Trinity dwell in Christ's body or bodily? Um, in Christ bodily is what he says, um, if he is not God himself and, and that Jesus is higher than the angels, a theme, um, read, uh, re- reiterated in the book of Hebrews to worship an angel or any other creature, no matter how exalted is to violate the biblical, uh, prohib- prohibition against idolatry. The I am's of John's gospel also bear witness to the identification of Christ's um, deity, okay? In the 5th century, the Council of Chalcedon, AD, which is 451 AD, affirms that Jesus was truly man and truly God, okay? Jesus' two natures, human and divine, were said to be without uh, mixture, confusion, separation, or division. So very clearly, and this is something that honestly I think about, and I'm like, what in the world? Because we see that God, Jesus came, he is God, all right? He was God. He came down to become human, and he was 100% human, but also 100% God. He did not re- He did not um, let go of his deity. He was still God when he was here on earth. And this is something, obviously, that kind of like we shake, our, we shake our heads and we scratch our heads like, what in the world? But these are mysteries and um, things that we, again, we cannot fully understand because we are humans and we are not God. But we know for a fact that they go hand in hand, that he was 100% human when he came down here, but he was still 100% God, clinging to his deity um, and not leaving it when he came down here on earth. Um, 
So yes, so we see that clearly in scripture. And because of that, we also have these confessions that the churches have made, um, churches in the past, uh, Christian, you know, Bible-based, Bible-teaching churches um, have said this, okay? So that's it. That was chapter 25, and that is the beginning of who Jesus Christ is. Because if we don't already from the get stabilize the fact that He is God, we don't stabilize and make clear the foundation of the fact that He has his, he, the deity of Christ, that He is God Himself, then everything else doesn't make sense. Everything else you shouldn't even believe. This is the basis. This is the foundation. Jesus is God. God. Um, he is the part of the Trinity. He is part of, he is Yahweh. Okay. So now let's go through the summary statements, which she usually does at the end of each chapter. Uh, summary statement number one, the deity of Christ is a doctrine essential to, to Christianity. Two, the church has had crisis of heresy regarding uh, Christ's deity in the fourth, fifth, 19th and 20th century. Uh, number three, the Council of Nicaea, which was in 325 AD, affirmed the deity of Christ, declared that he is of the same substance or essence as the Father, and that he was not a created being. Number four, the New Testament clearly affirms the deity of Christ, which I have read myself and have actually shared with you guys in the past. The Council of Chalcedon, which is uh, was at 451 AD, also declared that Jesus was truly God. And then what I do every time I go live with you guys, I didn't do it yesterday. I don't know why I didn't do it. I'm sorry. Um, I show you all the Bible verses that Arshis Pro used, obviously to back up everything that he's saying. And I'm going to show you here. Maybe if you want to take a screenshot. Screenshot, sorry. Mark 2, 28, John 1, uh, 1 through 14, John 8, 58, John 20, 28, Philippians 2, 9 through 11, and Colossians 1, 19. Whoop. So just for homework for you guys, if you want to go ahead and look those up and read those. So you don't, you don't just believe anything that I say. You shouldn't just believe anything that anybody says. You should believe what the Word of God says. Look them up for yourself. Um, yeah, so you can... Uh, can read it. Nothing better than reading it from God's word yourself through your eyes. All right. That's about it. Love you guys. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.